I'm going to go over the whole entire rem creation process from beginning to end quickly just to kind of eliminate some of the confusion in class that some people are having and hopefully get people caught up. Um, currently, what I want you guys to do is I want you to follow along with this video. If you're going to use it in class, make sure you use it with headphones and pause, go back through, um, pay attention to where my mouse is clicking. You should see mouse clicks on the screen. Um, they should kind of pop up a little bit every time I click on the mouse. Uh, but the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and calibrate everything into inches, um, which I've already done here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an 18 by 8.5 inch rim that is modeled after a BBS 7 spoke rim. This rim is not going to be done in the sculpt environment, uh, but I will put together some sculpt environment tutorials. So uh, follow along with this one for right now. This is going to cover a lot of the stuff that we've been already talking about in class. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert my uh, canvas that I'm going to be working from for my rim. I'm going to load this in from my computer, so desktop, CAD class, and wheel project. And so I've got a bunch of stuff in here that I'm going to be using for this project. Uh, for the most part, we're going to use this BBS Forge 7, and I'm also going to be using my wheel contour profiles. So the contour profiles is the first one that I'm going to go ahead and put in here. It's going to go right here on this face. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Before I even use that, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out the, uh, actual, the actual dimensions of my rim really quickly so that I can position everything carefully. So I just hit L on the keyboard. Um, L is the shortcut for my line tool, so it automatically will bring that up. Select a face to actually sketch on. And we're going 18 and a half inches, so that is 9.25 in radius. We're going to go 90 degrees up. I've talked a little bit about construction lines, so just so this is not too much in the way, I'm going to go ahead and hit X, and that converts this line to construction, and we're going to finish our sketch out. All right, so the canvas here is tiny, tiny, tiny. So what we need to do is we need to come in here, we need to calibrate this canvas out. Um, I am going to be designing my rim off of this basic, well, no, I'm going to use this EH2 profile here. This one's a little bit closer to the BBS um, style right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is it is an eight and a half inch wide rim. So I'm going to go ahead and calibrate my canvas. I need to have it opened up. Right click on the actual canvas and calibrate. I'm going to go here to here, and I'm going to set this to 8.5 inches, and it pretty much disappears on me. That is okay. So now, the rim itself is 18 and a half across. So we're going to go ahead and right-click on canvas. We're going to edit it, and then I'm just going to drag my EH2 profile to right about here. Perfect. And I'm going to hit OK. It could probably come down just a little bit. Let's see if I can get that a little bit closer. Edit canvas. It's not going to let me. Oh, let's see here. We're going to bring, I think that's my Y distance that I'm working with here. So my Y distance, yes, negative one is way too much. So we're gonna go negative 0.5, nope, 0.25, good. And I'm gonna bring it over in the X direction, 1.2, perfect, that works for me. That gets me pretty darn close. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sketch right here on this actual canvas facing plane. Hit L to bring up my line tool. And so now I'm going to click, 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 just around the basic, oh, what's going on? Computer's not wanting to respond. Here we go. Perfect. All right. And I'm just going to continue working my way around this particular rim. All right, perfect. 
hit enter, that stops my, or return, that stops my line tool from working. You can also hit escape. Now what I'm gonna do is create an offset of this line. So I'm just gonna click and drag this up just about here. I'm not gonna go with the overall thickness because I think it's been getting to be a little bit too much. And hit enter again, grab my line tool and just come straight down. It's okay if I have that little bit hanging over there. I just want these lines right here to be straight. So now I can click T on the keyboard. That brings up my trim tool and I can just get rid. Whoops, I am not gonna get rid of that. That was not at all what I wanted to happen. So we'll just keep that there. That's totally fine. It's not gonna hurt anything in the sketch. Then I'm gonna grab my line tool over here, come down, connect those two together and hit finish sketch at the top. So now we can turn our canvas off. This is based off of our origin. So now we can come in, create, revolve, grab this, it's already selected. Uh, my axis is gonna be this axis here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now I do want my rim to have some softer lines inside of it. Um, and so in order to do that, I am going to actually come in and add fillets to all of these surfaces. So we're gonna go ahead and hit F on the keyboard. That brings up my fillet tool. And what I'm gonna do is select faces here. And I just wanna be sure to not grab a line. I wanna grab all of these faces. Because we can fill it by face infusion and probably what I should have done is let's see here let me cancel out of this bring up my fillet tool again and now I am just going to drag a marquee from the top left down and around just like that and so that should have selected a lot of stuff outside and in and now I can come in and select things a little bit faster. Make sure we grab that. And then make sure we grab, nope, not edges. You definitely don't wanna combine edges and faces. Here and then here, perfect. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with like a 0.2, see what happens. That gives me a little bit of softness all the way around. 0.3, that's gonna give me a little bit more, probably closer to what I'm looking for. So now when I come around to the front side of this wheel right here, everything has a much softer edge to it and I am very, very happy with that. All right, now, got our rim created. We can go ahead and we can turn this off. One of the things that I was talking to you guys about was using a reference, um, whether it's actually here in Fusion or a reference that um, you're using kind of on another browser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and insert another canvas, and this is going to be the actual picture of the BBS rim that I was telling you guys about. So desktop, CAD class, wheel project, BBS forged, seven spoke. We're gonna hit open. I'm gonna put it on this facing plane here, and I've got my canvas opacity turned down pretty low. Now, the cool thing is, is I can just go ahead and start dragging the scale of this up until it actually meets the size of the rim that I'm designing on, so just like that. And then what's even cooler is that I can drag this around at angles so that these spokes line up right here in line with one of my origins and allow me to create all of these cutouts really nice and evenly. So this particular cutout here is directly opposite of this cutout here. And what I wanna do is keep things very symmetrical with my design. And so you'll see here in just a couple of minutes what I'm gonna do in order to create those things. So let's go ahead and say okay on this. And so here is my canvas and here is my actual rim. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that rim off for right now. Now this particular rim has, um, if we looked at it from the side, it's gonna kind of bow out a little bit from the rim. 
and then it's going to come into that center section. So it's got some really cool curvature to it. Um, I'm a big fan of BBS rims. It's kind of it goes back to my my Volkswagen days when I was about your all's age. So to create this, I'm actually going to sketch out these areas here. Um, I'm not going to sketch out the overall spoke. I'm sketching the negative space on this. So again, I'm going to grab my line tool. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to draw a line straight up, just like this. I want to make sure that my first sketch is turned off because it was still on. There we go. And this is going to be a construction line also. So I'm going to hit X on the keyboard. And now what I'm going to do is simply draw a circle, a center pointed circle out to here, just like that. And now I'm going to draw a two pointed circle from here until I get a basic curvature and I'm drawing just up along this line right here. I'm going to draw another two-pointed circle until I get something pretty close to the tangent of that one. Actually, let's do... I'm just going to, let's see, how do I want to do this? Maybe might want to actually bring the circle. Whoops, let me get out of that. My circle tool. I'm actually going to draw my two-pointed circle. Of course, it's going to go back to center pointed. C on the keyboard, two-pointed circle. I'm going to draw this out kind of from here until I get something kind of like what I'm looking for in here. There we go. And I can actually move this around. I want it to stay pretty tangent with that. So I think for right now, what I'm gonna do is just keep that right there. I'm still not super satisfied with it, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab my line tool and I'm gonna click and hold on this circle and drag it down to this circle here. And now this line is tangent with this circle, this line is tangent with this circle. I am going to trim some stuff out here. So I hit T again on the keyboard to trim everything out except for this stuff. Now I'm not sure if I can make a tangent connection between this and this. I can, that's perfect. So now these two are tangent. And if I come in and move this circle here, it's gonna keep everything tangent the way that it should be. So now everything is still really well pieced together. I'm gonna go and grab my mirror sketch tool. I'm gonna click on this line, this line, this line and this semicircular line here. I'm gonna mirror across this line here. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm totally fine with this bit right here, not lining up perfectly with the image over here. That's fine for right now. So now what I'm gonna do is take this and I wanna pattern this around. So we're gonna create a circular pattern, circle, uh, circular pattern. And here, here, I gotta zoom in a little bit closer on this. My tools keep getting in the way of things that I wanna click on. And then this one here. And then we're gonna tell it that our center point is right here. All right, so we need seven of these. So, four, five, six, and seven, and that puts them all roughly in the right place. This image was taken at an angle, so you can't use it as a perfect reference, but right now, since we're sketching on a flat plane, um, everything is happening the way that it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter slash return, and there are our parts. The next thing that we need to do is actually sketch out this bit here. And so I'm gonna create another circle because this has a circular inside to it. 
I'm going to drag this out to here. And then another circle that's going to come out to here, just like that. And now I'm going to sketch another line, even though I don't necessarily need to have this construction line here. It just kind of helps me lay everything out. So again, let's see, we're going to go ahead and click on that, make it construction. Now it's dotted. And so now I'm going to start laying out this bit that's going to come through and around here. So we take our line tool to start and here to here to here. Okay, so two lines right along here. I can come in and grab my fillet tool for sketching and I can actually add some curve to this. I click and hold on my line tool, it creates an arc. So that just created an arc right here, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to click with my line tool, I'm not letting off of my mouse, and it's making an arc. So now I come back, trim a lot of this circular bit out of here. It's going to kind of be I should have done this on a separate sketch because now I have to come in and trim it out of all of these seven shapes. So bear with me while I do that. When I take screen captures, it tends to slow things down on here a lot. So you get the nice little Mac beach ball of doom pretty frequently. Luckily I'm not going to have to do this on the center. And then there's that one right there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete out that bit of circle there and this bit of circle here. And I'm just going to see what happens when I make this and this tangent. It worked. And so now I'm going to go ahead and grab my tangent constraint here to here. And so now that worked also, which is perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mirror this across to this side. So we're going to go ahead and grab our mirror tool. Make sure that we actually get these lines. So I got all of that selected just by double clicking. And now my mirror line is going to be this one. It's going to put that right there. And so there we go. So now if I go ahead and turn off this canvas, you can see how now I've got this particular section of wheel here. Go ahead, create a circular pattern. The center point will be here. And we're going to change that to seven. And there we go. That's the profile for this particular rim. And these are the cuts that we're going to make. So this is the rim, rim cuts. I'm going to go ahead and rename that sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and finish that one off. Because right now I really don't need that sketch too much. What I do need is my actual rim up here in bodies, and I'm going to tell it exactly what I want the profile of this to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and create a little bit of some detailing information for the center section of my rim and where it kind of needs to come into. So I'm going to stop this video because it's 20 minutes and then we'll pick up on another one here in, here in the next couple of bits.